guys so i know i haven't made a video in a long time and i i think i went over like four loops and stuff really fast so i, I think it's better that i make a video on a for loop so i'm i'm going to take a very simple video uh, i'm going to call it um series sum that's what i'll call my class series sum so i'm just going to remove all that uh, let me make the font bigger so that you can see i was getting some complaints that the font was too small i think this should be big enough for everyone to see and i'll i'll make it even bigger i guess let me make 20 yeah i think this is good so i'm i'm going to call it class series sum and basically the objective of this program is to find the sum of all the numbers from 1 to 100 it could be very well tedious to do it from 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to 100 and there is a way in math to do it called uh, arithmetic progression i don't want to get into that right now but uh, i'll i'll show you how to do it through a program uh, let's say we create a class called series sum have our main function and well we type well we need to store the sum in a variable so we let that equal to 0 in sum equals 0 type for int i equals 1 i less than equal to 100 i plus plus now what we do is we write sum plus equals i close the brace system dot out print ln sum now let me go over this code i think you all are familiar with the class and uh, function declarations and we're just initializing a variable called sum setting it equal to zero initially now what happens when you write over a variable let's say i have a variable called x x is initially equal to 4 then i write x equals 5 so that 4 gets erased and the new value of x becomes 5 so if i write sum plus equal to i it's the same as writing sum is equal to sum plus i this the first these things are the same so what you mean is in this is new value of sum equals old value of sum plus value of i that's what you mean by this statement it can also be written like that sum is equal to sum plus i and what i just showed you sum plus equal to i it's a shortcut operator makes your work easier so yeah i got class compiled with no syntax errors let me try running this new series sum void main and we get the answer as 50 50 now if any of you want to verify that let me take out my calculator calculator um well one plus two plus three i don't want to do that so if you guys want to verify that then well go ahead so yeah that that's the first program i'm showing you let me get on the second one uh it's called it's called let me see let me think i'm gonna give you something a bit challenging this time what you have to do is you have to check whether a number is prime or not prime that's what i'll call my class class prime now uh, how to go about this now i've taught you parameter input so you just take input of n which means number let me make that int num so yeah you've got your number now you need to check whether it's prime or not now what is a prime number i want to make this definition very clear to all of you a prime number is one that can only de be divided by one or itself so what they're basically saying is if you take a number let's say 11 it can only be divided by 1 and 11 it cannot be divided by any other number so let's keep a number uh, or rather let's keep a variable called int 
factors and set it equal to zero initially so what we know about factors is well a factor of a number is a divisor in simple terms basically if it can divide the number it leaving no remainder that's called a factor so uh, and in this video I'm going to introduce a new command called the modulus operator it's very interesting so let, let's start a loop from int i equals 1 to i less than equal to the number and then you write i plus plus so w what are we doing here we're starting a loop from 1 to the number so if you take a number 11 it'll go from 1 all the way up to 11 so now what you write is if num percent i now this percent is the modulus operator what it basically does is it gives you the remainder of anything so if num percent i basically what it returns is it gives you a value which is the remainder of num divided by i so let's say you have 11 and i is 1 so i 11 divided by 1 it will give you a value of 0 11 divided by 2 it will give you a value of 1 that's the remainder because 2 goes into 11 5 times and leaves 1 remainder so if n mod i equal to equal to 0 factors plus equal to 2 wait sorry factors plus plus my mistake I'm really sorry and I forgot to give the brace here and if the factors equal to 2 sorry again uh, yeah then you print system dot out dot print ln num is prime else system dot out dot print ln num is not prime and you close your class and function there so let me go over this code really simple you take your number as input you store a variable called factors which is equal to 0 now a prime number if you take a prime number let's say 101 uh, 101 has only two factors 1 and 101 that's why it's a prime number now so you start a loop from 1 to the number equal to the number so that both the number and 1 are included and well if it's equal to 2 which means if 1 and number are the only factors then well you print its prime now let me explain modulus to you basically if you have two numbers 5 and 2 5 mod 2 will be 1 because 2 goes into 5 2 times and leaves 1 as remainder so modulus just finds the remainder I'll make a separate video on modulus explaining how it works and what it is exactly but just know that it remains the uh, it gives you the remainder when one number is divided by another so let's compile this and try running it uh, let's say let's say let me think of a prime number 103 103 is prime see it prints it there let's think of another prime number simple one 7 print 7 is prime let's say 101 now let's try something that's not prime 102 102 is not prime so you can see it's really working and uh, I don't know in some books you may see that this same code is written in a slightly different way it goes from 2 to less than the number and well and here it will change to 0 now if you haven't figured this out by now let me explain to you basically when we went from 1 to the number the number of factors we got was 2 so if you go from 2 to less than the number basically you're not including the number that means the number of factors you'll get is 0 because if it's a prime number the only factors are 1 and the number you're excluding the chances of 1 you're starting from 2 so 1 can't be you can't check for 1 because I will never be 1 and well you can't check for the number because I is less than the number so you won't get any factors now why I don't like or rather why I didn't show you this method in the beginning is very simple let's say I enter 1 whether I want to check whether 1 is a prime number or not it prints 1 is prime now 
I don't know if many of you know or not, but um, even I'm not sure about this. But I don't know whether one is prime or not. I think it is. But if you look at the program technically, if you input one here and you start a loop from two to less than one, that makes no logical sense. Which is why going from one to less than equal to the number, you can go from one to one. It it makes perfect sense, and that's why. I preferred the first method I showed you but whatever you guys are comfortable with you can use that method so I hope this video helped you guys and I'll make another one soon so peace